Welcome back to the Part 7 tutorial of Fast API in Python. In this video, you'll learn how to create put, patch, and delete operations. By adding them to the API, your clients can update or delete data through your API. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Lian. Welcome to Just Into Data, where data science and data engineer materials are shared and made simpler for you. Here are the main HTTP operations we've talked about. We've used GET to retrieve data and used POST to create data. In this video, we'll learn about the other three operations. The PUT operations to update data, the PATCH operations, which is also to update data but only a partial update, and the DELETE operations to delete data. Let's go to PyCharm to add these operations. First. We'll add a delete operation, since it's the easiest. Let's put it below the other operations, so same syntax, at app.delete for the delete operation, with pass being slash users, and slash curly brackets, username. So we'll be using this username as a pass parameter. This will be used to specify the user that will be deleted. Then, we'll define the function delete user with the argument as the pass parameter of username declared as string. Within the function, we'll say del for delete from user db, the data with key being username. And we'll return dictionary with key being message, value being an f string saying successfully deleted user username. So it's very simple. When there is a delete request sent to this path, such username's data will be deleted from the database. Let's go to the terminal and run this code. And go to the documentation in the browser. There, you can see the delete operation. Actually, you might have noticed that there's different colors for each type of operations. Blue for get, green for post, and red for delete. Let's expand and try this out. So this is the pass parameter username, which is required as a string. Let's put Jack. That is the first user within our database, and execute. It looks like we've successfully deleted user Jack. We can verify this with this get operation again. So let's execute to return the entire database. As you can see, there are only two users now. No more Jack in our database. That's it for the delete operation. Now let's work on the update operations. We can use either put or patch. We'll start from put. Put will replace the existing data with new data sent to the API. Let's add it here. Same syntax, at app.put operation, with pass slash users. Then define the function update user with argument user. Declare using the pydentic model of user. So this user will hold, be holding the data sent to the client to the API, or say the request body. In the previous video, we've defined this class user. Let's scroll up to look at it again. It's here. Is defined with those four fields and constraints. So let's go back down to the put operation. Again, we're validating the request body user according to this pydentic model user. So we need to send data as described in the statements defined in model user. Then, within the function, we can say username equals users username field. Again, there are hint and auto completion since we declare user by a pydentic model. Then we can say user db, the database, when its key is this username, will replace its value with user.dict. Again, this is because we need to convert user to dictionary. Then, we'll return a dictionary with key as message, f string saying successfully updated user, curly brackets username. So to recap, 
when there's the put request sent to this path of slash users, it will take in request body that's modeled based on class user. Then the function takes the field of user name and replace the data of that user according to the new data. Now we can save this to update the app and go to the browser. There's the new operation, put. Let's try it out. So again, the request body is the data we'll send to the API. It contains the new data that will be replacing the existing data. Let's try username as Jill, which is an existing user in our database, location as Antarctica, age as 111, and execute. So we've got the 200 success code again. We've successfully updated user Jill. Let's verify the updated results. Again, we'll use the get operation to get users from the database. So execute. There, a 200 code. You can see that Jill is now location Antarctica, age of 111. This is great. Now, Let's try another update with the put operation. We'll still target the username Geo. We'll keep date join the same, but we'll remove the fields of location and age. Let's execute it and see what will happen. All right, so a response code of 200, so we are ready to check the updated results. We'll go to the same get operation and execute it again. So here is a user named Jill. Something is strange with her location and age. There used to be information. Why are they both now now? This is because within the put operation, we removed those two fields. So it did not send any data for them to replace the old data. But by default, put is doing a full update. So fast API took the default values of both, which are none or nulls as we've set in the Pydantic model of user. But a lot of times in reality, we only want to update part of the information. Maybe a client only wants to update the date joint, as what we've tried, but keep the other fields the same as before. They don't want to replace other fields by their default values. This is when we can use a partial update. Let's do a patch operation. Let's add a patch operation to our API. We'll put it at the bottom. We can base it off from the put operation. So let's copy the put operation and paste it below. We'll change put to patch for a patch operation to the same path users. Then change the function to update user partial. And still taking a request body user model by class user. Within the function, this line of code is the same still taking username from the request body, but we need to change this line of code. Right now we are reassigning user db with key user as this new dictionary. Since we want partial update, we'll instead use the update method. The update method can update the dictionary with the new data provided within its argument. So if this data in the argument only includes part of the fields, only those fields will be updated, while the rest remains. One more thing to add. Within the dict method, we also should add argument exclude and set equals true. This setting will exclude the default values from being used for updating. So for our example, the fields location and age with default values of none will be excluded. To recap, we must use a combination of the update method with exclude unset equals true to achieve partial updates. For example, if we set the request body user to be like this, so we're only sending in data of username and date joint. None of those three lines of code will return the desired results. They will either update location and age to null or remove those two fields from the database. I won't show the details, but feel free to test them out if you're interested. All right, so we've set up a patch operation to the path of users. It will take in request body user, then update the database only based on the new data being sent. 
so a partial update. Let's go to the terminal, press Ctrl plus C to cancel this app from running, and then use the UVCorn command to run it again. This is only because we've changed the database already in the previous operations. We want to start fresh again. Now we can go to the dock to test the patch operation out. Here it is. So let's do the user of Geo again. We'll change the date to 1999, September the 9th. And remove location and age. So we only want to update its date join, but nothing else. We'll execute it. And we can see the 200 code again. So now let's verify the results. So Jill has an updated date joined 1999, September the 9th, while the location and age fields remain the same, still LA and 19. We did a partial update. Let's go back to the code. We can actually also replace this patch method with the put method. This will work the same. But technically, the put method is supposed to be for complete replacement or update while patch is supposed to be for partial updates. You can pick whichever you want. I personally like distinguishing them, so it's more clear. So let's change it back to patch. All right, now I want to show you something else. We've been setting the request body to follow the class user. What if we want a different model when we are updating data? We can create a new model. Let's say we'll change this class to user update. So other things remain the same, still taking a request body and doing partial update based on it, except for the request body needs to follow the new model of user update. So let's build this new model user update. Let's grow up. We can inherit user update from the existing class user. We'll add it here. Class user update parenthesis, instead of base model, will base on user. So user update inherits from user, while user inherits from base model, same idea. So now user update inherits all users fields and their type declaration, and so on. We don't have to write as much code to define user update. Within the class user update, we just need to declare the differences. The statements written here will override the statements in the class user. For example, maybe when updating, users don't have to enter the date joined again. We can copy and paste the statement and make it optional with default value of none. So when we model based on user update, this line of code about date join will override the previous one, making it optional. We can also say copy and paste the line of code for age and change it to be less than 200. So now users can update their age to be over 5 and less than 200. Again, the model using user update, this line of code about age overrides the previous line. Let's save this and try it out. So we'll try out this new patch operation. Let's update Geo again. Since date join is optional now, we can remove this. We'll also remove location and change age to 199. This is higher than the previous limit of 130, but below the new limit of 200. If we execute it, it is OK. Now let's verify the results with the get operation again. There, you can see that Geo has a new age of 199, while date joined and location are the same as before. Great. This worked based on the new Pydantic model user update. So back to our code. For the put operation defined before, we're using the Pydantic model user. While for the patch operation, we're using a new model called user update. Great. In this video, you've learned how to create delete operations to delete data, 
as well as put and patch operations to update data. You've also used class inheritance to create new Pydantic model based on existing ones. In the next video, we'll learn how to raise exceptions during operations. Stay tuned. Did you learn something new in this video? If so, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below this video, right now. If you're interested in more data science tutorials and courses, please head over to our website justintodata.com. Thank you and see you in the next video.